and this is what we've been waiting for. Two and a quarter laps in the heart of New Zealand here in the Waikato. Green lights, racing. everybody welcome along to party central cambridge raceway the race by grins for 2023 green light is up Hello and a very good evening and welcome here to Smith & McKenzie for the barrier draw reveal for the race by Grins as we gear up for the massive race coming up on Friday night for the third running of the million dollar slot race and of course for the TAB trot with $600,000 for the inaugural running. I'm joined by Craig Dewell Thompson, exciting night in front of us. It is BP, uh, welcome into Cambridge Raceway, well to Cambridge for obviously the big one on Friday. We've got uh, of course the most expensive the richest race for trotters going around $600,000. The million dollar race, this is the third running. Of course, first year taken up by Self Assured. He overcame a bad draw. Last year, good draws played their part, BP, with copy of that having a nice draw, rolling forward and finding the front. What unfolds in the next 30 minutes will dictate who starts favourite for the big race in two days' time. What are some of the keys that we're looking for in terms of the barrier draws here tonight for, for some of these horses? Well, I think that we saw a bit of an entree to it last uh, Thursday, BP. We saw, obviously, eight of the ten go round. We saw Merlin having to sit outside his stablemate sooner the better and overcome what looked a niggly draw, but good enough to do that. We had big runs in behind with Don't Stop Dreaming flashing over. He ran the best sectionals in the race. Um, he's going to rely on a good draw for him. Uh, also, a stablemate, self-assured. I mean, he's in the twilight of his career, $2 million earner, but fair to say, He's racing fantastically well, so there's a lot to unfold. All right, and great to have the Australians involved as well again this year. Well, it is. Uh, better Eclipse. Unfortunately, we lost Rock and Roll Do on Saturday BP, but when one door closes, another one opens, and that opened for Kango, and he gets his chance again, uh, obviously running sixth in this race last year. All right, here's the field that's in front of us for the race by Grins, over 2,200 metres. On Friday night, uh, out of Cambridge Raceway, where we have uh, Better Eclipse, Don't Stop Dreaming, Kango. Yes, Kango uh, works his way into the field now. I'll Old Town Road, Mark Shard Merlin, uh, one of the emergencies in Republican Party, speak the truth, South Coast Art and Self Assured, and Sooner the Better. Right, let's get to our MC for the night uh, for the barrier draw reveal, and we link in now with Greg O'Connor. Thanks so much for that, uh, BP. Exciting time, isn't it? Really looking forward to what's about to unfold here for both races. The Million Dollar Race by Grins. Uh, you boys have mentioned the previous winners. It's been a wonderful concept that's been put together by Dave Branch and his team out of Cambridge Raceway, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Harness Racing Club. It's just uh, an awesome concept, which has been... It's encapsulated... Uh, well, the racing public around New Zealand and this year even more so around Australia. Uh, of course, the Tab Trot has uh, attracted the four best trotters that they've got up against our four best trotters. And if it was an Inter-Dominion Grand Final and you had this sort of field, I think everyone, uh, administrators alike, would have uh, been blown away by that. What we're about to do is reveal what has uh, happened earlier this afternoon, around about lunchtime, uh, the stewards, along with Harness Race New Zealand, uh, did the barrier draws for both races. And what we're going to do right now is reveal them in reverse order. Don't forget, there is one ballot in each race. No movement from the second line to the front line. So let's start with the race by Grins. And therefore, with 10 starters and one ballot, we start with Number 11, which is Sooner the Better. 
Sooner the better, of course, recently went across to Australia, uh, had four starts over there, picked up $200,000 without winning a race, was second uh, in the Miracle Mile, second in the Chariots of Fire. He's one of three in the race for Barry Purden and Scott Phelan, the first horse that Barry Purden has had in a race by Grins, missing out the first couple of years. But of course, as we know, he has a couple of runners in this year's. Number 10. So two on the second row. And it is self-assured. The winner of the inaugural running of the race by Grins. He hasn't been blessed with numbers in terms of his barriers. Uh, he came up with eight the first year. He came up with 10 last year, I think, as well as what he's got this year. So to the second row at this stage for him. He's a $2.3 million earner. He's a remarkable racehorse. He won a New Zealand Cup. He's won a couple of Auckland Cups. And, of course, he's trained by Mark and Nathan Purden. And master horseman Mark Purden will do the driving once again. Number nine in the race by Grins is... We're about to reveal it. South Coast Arden, the big bloke. He's been to Australia. He's won half a dozen races over there. He's come back. He's now in the capable hands of Matty White. Matthew will be doing the driving of him on Friday night. He's got the inside second row draw. He didn't have a whole lot of luck from a wide front row draw in the flying mile last week. And he's come up with the inside second row this year for the race by Grins. Number eight, one of the Australians, better eclipse, outside front row draw for him, a former winner of the Chariots of Fire, a runner-up in the Inter-Dominion behind Leap to Fame. He came last year, finished fourth in the race, a tremendous racehorse, better eclipse. He's got the wide barrier draw, he's trained by Jess Tubbs, and he'll have Greg Sugars in the bike again, this outstanding rainsman from Victoria. Number seven, Speak the Truth, the horse that of course won the Cordina Sprint in 148.8 sitting parked, he finished third in the Miracle Mile, he won the inaugural Hayden, he's trained by Shannon Price and expat Kiwi Adam Sanderson will take the reins. Uh, he really has developed this horse. He's an outstanding racehorse. He's won 16 of 29 and over half a million dollars in earnings. Number six, Republican Party, who is the ballot. So if there isn't a scratching, he will come out, meaning that runners seven and eight come in one spot. Trained by Cran and Chrissy Dalgetty. He was a runner-up in the New Zealand Derby behind a cooter. He won the junior free-for-all last year. He's an outstanding pacer in his own right. Number five, last week's flying mile winner, Merlin. He's been in outstanding form. He's trained by Barry Purden and Scott Phelan. He will have the services of Zachary Butcher, who was placed second last year, of course, with Old Town Road. He's been a brilliant racehorse. He's had a number of battles with Don't Stop Dreaming. In fact, he leads that challenge five to four, and he's beaten them in the last four clashes. Number four. Max Shard, this amazing pacer who won remarkably the Young Guns final at Alexandra Park in 2017, would you believe? He's been in Australia, he's come back, they've taken the hopples off and he's rejuvenated. He's done an incredible job. Barry Purden, Scott Phelan, Scott will take the reins. He's a winner of 18 races and over $650,000. Barrier three. The same saddle cloth he wore this night last year, Old Town Road. Trained by John Dickey, of course, uh, Joshua will take the reins this year. Comes up with a really good barrier draw. He's had an indifferent last 12 months. John's worked hard to get him back to his best. If you saw the way he pushed him over the line last Thursday night, he's not without a chance. He's only had the 28 starts. He's won 10 of those. He's a very, very good animal. Number two, don't stop dreaming. Winner of 15 of 24 starts. He's the pre-paced favourite for the race, and I would suggest he be, might be even warmer than that now. He's the winner of close to three quarters of a million dollars. 
He's been uh, outstanding for Mark and Nathan Purden. Natalie Rasmussen takes the reins. And he was booming home in the flying mile last week. That means there's only one. The last to get into the field. He was fifth last year. He got barrier eight last year. The big bloke they call Kango. <laughs> trained by Anna Donnelly. He pushed them over the line the other night. He's been in terrific form. He deserves absolutely his opportunity to have a second shot at the race by Grins. And no better driver around Cambridge than David Butcher. He'll have some decisions to make, but he's got plenty of options from barrier one. That's your field revealed for this outstanding race. Wow. What does that mean for the bookmakers? We'll find out very shortly. What does that mean for the analysis? We're going to find out uh, very shortly as well. But I'm going to go up to you boys uh, now. BP, Whale, initial reactions to what is an exciting barrier draw. Uh, but as I said before, it's only a bad draw after the race. That's right, Greg, and it's nice to be able to hear the cheers there from a few people there with those uh, key barrier draws. First of all, winners and losers for you, Craig. Uh, winners out of the draw definitely don't stop dreaming barrier two. Um, had a good talk to Mark Purden afterwards last Thursday night after the race and said, if you get a draw, we haven't seen you use it. He said, trust me, I can if I have a chance. And he gets his chance barrier two, so he's the big winner out of the draw. Along with the stablemate, self assured because he follows him through now to the second race. Not a bad draw for him. He stays out of it early. Um, he, he's been there and done that. We know he loves to get into a dog fight, he gets his chance. Merlin's got an intermediate draw. He's yeah. kind of, he's kind of in between them here. He's got Kango drawn barrier one, good gate speed. We know that old old town roads in three, same draw as last year. He'll go forward. Losers out of the draw, BP definitely the Australians. Um, it's going to be tough for, for obviously the Aussie and speak the truth from barrier seven to come across. He's got to go forward. He can't go back. And of course, better at Cliss, who's really good last uh, last year. BP has drawn barrier eight. So the two Aussies get the visitors draw in seven and eight. And what about sooner the better? horse who's done so well with the barrier draws over the last few weeks uh, comes up with a, a terrible draw in the second Well, he needed his gate speed. We saw that in the Miracle Mile. He got a beautiful trip and he peeled off the back of Leap to Fame and just at the top of the straight, you thought, geez, he's got half a chance of ripping this race off. And he was good last week, but from barrier one. I'm not sure from barrier 11. I think he was about $7 prior to the draw. I'm not expecting that. Probably double after the draw. All right, we'll get some more reaction uh, from uh, bookmakers, of course, with their release of their markets very shortly. But of course we do have the inaugural running of the TAB Trot worth $600,000. Let's uh, have a look at the runners uh, for the TAB Trot. Then we'll get back to uh, Greg O'Connor. RC Phoenix, uh, call me the breeze. Eurocash will be uh, the first emergency. We have Just Believe, uh, the two-time Inter Dominion winner. We've got Midnight Dash, Muscle Mountain, Mystic Max, Oscar Bonavina, Coin Elida. Really, this is going to be an exciting race coming up on Friday night, Craig when you look at the horse flesh that is on that page. Well, the best, best trotters in Australasia going around here, uh, BP. I mean, just Phoenix. He's, he's won 10 of his last 12. Um, he got beaten last time, but I tell you what, he's in fantastic form. And talking to Greg Sugars on Friday night, he said he travelled across. He got across on Thursday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. Travelled really well with his stable mate, Better Eclipse. He's a very good horse, and he can overcome bad draws. So be interested to see where he ends up. Uh, obviously, you got Muscle Mountain in here. Outstanding win in the group one last start. Oscar Bonavina back mm. in form, BP. He showed that speed that we know he's got, and I'm sure the Perns were very happy with the way that he performed last Thursday night. All right, let's pass it back uh, to you, Greg O'Connor, for the TAB Trot Draw. Yeah, thanks, BP. Uh, a big thank you to the team from uh, Grins, of course, getting behind uh, the race by Grins for the third time, and to Entain TAB for getting behind uh, this uh, trotting race, which has drawn a remarkable field. Let's get straight into the reveal. One horse has to draw the second row, so it will be number nine, Oscar Bonavina, the winner of 26 of 62, including his last start in the Flying Mile last week. He's been an outstanding horse. Uh, he's only been beaten once in about his last seven or eight starts, included in that his win in the Renwick Farms Dominion and the New Zealand Trotting Free For All. He's back in form. He starts from the second row. From barrier position number eight, the Connections just had a little bit of luck with Don't Stop Dreaming. We talk about Muscle Mountain, 
from uh, barrier number eight, this wonderful trotter who's uh, won 32 of his 50 starts, 782,000, five-time Group 1 winner. He'll have to start from wide on the front row. Barrier number seven goes to his stablemate, Eurocash, the first emergency for the race, the winner of eight from 39. Also trained by Greg and Nina Hope, of course. Ben Hope will do the driving on Muscle Mountain. So Eurocash, the emergency, meaning if there isn't another scratching, Muscle Mountain comes in one. To barrier number six, a late arrival to the race, Mystic Max, the winner of eight from 35. Michael Purden owns, trains, Blair Orange, the six-time Premiership winning driver, will take the reins. He's won a couple of hundred thousand. He's won a South Bay Trotters Cup. He boomed home in the latest Fred Shaw behind Muscle Mountain, securing his spot in the race, to be fair. To number five, Midnight Dash, the perennial place getter. He's been placed at Group 1 level three times. He's finished third, four times he's finished fourth. He's such a consistent horse. Tony Hurler, he takes the reins. He's won over 300,000, the winner of 13 races. If you haven't worked it out yet, there's nothing about a Kiwi draw or a draw that favours the locals because it means the next four barrier draws are all Australians. Let's start with number four. Call Me The Breeze is his name. Outstanding winner of the Great Southern Star. He's only had the four runs in Australia. He's been nothing short of outstanding. Uh, really looking forward to seeing him in the flesh. He is the winner of $1.6 million. And it's brilliant to have uh, him here for the race. We go to Barrier Number three, it goes to the two-time Inter-Dominion winner, Just Believe, trained by Jess Tubbs to be driven by Greg Sugars. Really looking forward to seeing him strut his stuff around uh, Cambridge. As Craig said before, he's won 10 of his last 12 starts. He's a brilliant racehorse, Just Believe. He's been the benchmark, and now he gets his chance to show the Kiwis just how good he is. Number two... R.C. Phoenix had his measure last time. Brilliant to have uh, him here this time. Winner of 11 of 33. He ran second in the Great Square. Uh, that was back at the Carnival in July last year. First time I saw him, I thought he's a serious horse, and he has gone on with it. He comes up with Barrier 2, and we absolutely know who's got Barrier 1. The Queen herself, trained by Brent Lilly to be driven by Mr. 8,000. Chris Alford, exciting to have Queen Elida here to boot. The field for the tab trot has been drawn. Four Australians, four Kiwis, four Aussies, one to four, four Kiwis on the outside barrier draws. It's going to be some sort of race. As part of the tab trot this year, we had the sweepstake, of course. There's plenty of people around the country including a couple from Harness Link who bought 150 tickets and gave their people the opportunity uh, via their various social media services to uh, get involved. So we'll now reveal who has drawn what in terms of the sweepstake. Queen Elida, Barrier One, the lucky drawer, Glenn Donovan. I think he was one of the Harness Link people grabs the Queen herself, of course, trained by Brent Lilly. R.C. Phoenix. Who's the lucky drawer of that? Nick Coxon. Congratulations to you, Nick. you got one of the Australians who is in red-hot form at the moment. Just Believe. Tubbs, Sugars, Matthew Cross, who so often calls the races, the big races. He'll be presenting on course on Friday night. What an opportunity for a young man with a big mortgage, I understand. <laughs> no pressure, though, candy man. Call me the breeze. The lucky drawer is Jack Winwood. Congratulations to you, Jack. You've got yourself a super opportunity with this outstanding racehorse, Call Me the Breeze. Midnight Dash, the drawer, 
Charlie Hunter, one of the great names in world harness racing, let alone around here. He's got the perennial place getter and he has the master horseman, Tony Hurlihy, sitting in the bike. Mystic Max for Michael Purden. He picked this horse out himself. Bryce Parker has an opportunity. Don't forget, regardless of where they finish, $3,000 for the $100 outlay for anyone who was lucky enough to draw a horse. Muscle Mountain has been drawn by Claire Brody. Claire's pretty excited about that. Why wouldn't she be? He'll be in the green colours of the late Ian Dobson. The five-time Group 1 winner will have to start from his wide front row barrier draw. And Oscar, Oscar Bonavina, has been drawn by Costa Alice. Costa, another of the Harness Link lucky recipients. Thanks to all who participated in the sweepstake. Wow, boys, the barrier draws have been completed. I can't wait for your analysis of this. No such thing as a visitor's draw here, BP. No, there isn't. Uh, four of those Australians, one, two, three, four, and we'll talk more around the sweepstake as well. And uh, Matthew Cross, he gets himself just believe. Uh, can you believe it? Uh, anyway, let's first of all touch on the barrier draw, Craig. Uh, what do you see unfolding here over 22? Well, the winners are the Australians, aren't they, BP? <laughs> They've got one to four. Quinn Delotta was always going to get barrier one, but GRC Phoenix in two. Tremendous gate speed. Beat just believe last start. He's got another meat in the sandwich here mm. at barrier three. Call me the breeze. Also likes to go forward. The losers out of the draw. Muscle Mountain. Mm. Barrier eight. Where's Ben Hope going to settle up here? I don't think he can get across a bit at the start, so he's going to have to make a mid-race move. I like Oscar's draw here, BP. Yep. I really do. Uh, following out Quinta Lida, Mark has the option to come off straight away and on the back of RC Phoenix because there's only one on the second row. Uh, he's in the right spot because I think the best version of Oscar, we've seen him when he's driven cold and one run at them, he gets the opportunity from that draw to be driven like that. So do they need fireworks? What do they need for them to be able to be, get their best opportunity? Well, I think they need to go to war early. I think uh, RC Phoenix has indicated that they like to lead and they did that just to believe obviously he came from behind him last start and couldn't run him down but mm. there's a bit of, there's enough pressure in this race call me the breeze of course won the great southern star and beat just believe we know his quality sometimes get a little bit chewy though up on the nickel if you ask him to come off the gate and he can't find the front so it's going to be very interesting inside the first 400 meters but if you're on muscle mountain and oscar bonavina for the kiwis you want them to go to war early so you think call me the breeze can get to the pegs i'd say rc phoenix from barry too holds the key early uh, it's there whether they want to stay in front or want a hand That's it's going to be very interesting at the start. OK, Greg O'Connor, we'll get back to you because you're standing by with a couple of interviews. First of all, Greg Sugars. Yeah, thanks for that, BP. Let's start with the positive. The horse you guys call Harry has come up with what would seem straight away to be almost a perfect barrier draw. Yeah, interesting. Um, you never know the way these races are run. As you said before, it's uh, they're good barrier draws, you know, uh, before and after the race. Who, who knows how they're going to unfold? Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of speed around him, um, a lot of quality horses. It's an incredible field. Um, so, yeah, sometimes um, a good barrier draw looks good on paper, but, um, you know, can be sucked into doing too much early work and things like that. So not sure how it's going to play out just yet. All right, we're talking about Just Believe, of course. Uh, to New Zealanders, we've seen so much of him on TV. He went on that European trip and, well, clearly it clicked with him because he's basically been unbeatable since. Yeah, that's right. No, he's a lovely horse and he, and he showed that um, before we, we set on that journey um, to, to Europe. But, um, yeah, he seems to have come back, uh, you know, a better horse. He's probably a bit more all-round and uh, a bit more seasoned and, you know, handles things, um, you know, extremely well, which, which he always sort of did. But um, he's, he's a fully matured horse now and, um, yeah, I think he's handled this trip well so far. So hopefully we see the best of him over here. He's only been beaten twice in his last 12, and it's been last time by RC Phoenix and Call Me the Breeze in the Great Southern Star. They're serious horses, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's an incredible uh, crop of horses that we've got at the moment, um, especially in Victoria. And uh, yeah, it's great that, um, that so many of us have come over here to, to make this race uh, a great spectacle on, on Kiwi soil. And I, I don't think, uh, you know, regardless of the result, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to walk away uh, being disappointed with the race that we're going to see um, at Cambridge on Friday night. Who do you fear and what have you made of the Kiwi performers? Oh, look, like I said, they're, they're all you know, very quality horses. Um, obviously got a lot of healthy respect, obviously, for, um, from, from the Australian horses, well, all the horses trained in Australia that are over here. Um, and RC Phoenix is obviously 
fared very well with the draw. He's a horse that's on the way up, but um, Corn with the Breeze, he's only had the, the four starts here, but um, you can't really fault his performances, and he was obviously a very well-performed horse um, in Europe before he uh, made, made the trip down um, to the Southern Hemisphere. So um, very impressed with his gate speed, and um, you know I'm sure they'll have him spot on for this. So, yeah, whoever's in front's going to be hard to beat. Yep, they certainly are. Have you watched much of Cambridge? Have you been doing that? I suppose you've been taking a lot more notice, uh, seeing as you're bringing two horses, you and Jess, and let's get to better Eclipse. Um, he came last year and won a tremendous race from a similar draw. He's going to have to do that again. Yeah, absolutely. No, he didn't have any luck. He had three runs over in New Zealand here um, last year round and, you know, performed super in all three of those and uh, was void of luck in, in every start. So maybe that was driver error, I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. We'll, we'll see how we go this time around. Did they both travel well? Yeah, everything seems good so far. Um, both boys have uh, seemed bright and alert and all's well. So, uh, yeah, just hope luck's on our side uh, when it really counts. All right, tremendous to have you here. Looking forward to seeing what you can do around Cambridge. Thanks a lot. Greg Sugars, uh, who he and his wife Jess have a two-pronged attack. Here's a lady with a one-pronged attack who was trying to get the barrier draw out of me before it was revealed. And now you know why. Um, you were hoping for a front row draw, just not that wide. No, I just asked your opinion on what you thought of the barrier draw, <laughs> not what I thought. <laughs> um, let's talk about your horse. Speak the truth. He's done an incredible job. Uh, his performances over the carnival at Menangle probably gave not so much you confidence, but everyone who follows this horse, and the Queenslanders already knew how good he was, but he showed how good he was by winning that Cordina sitting park. Yeah, no, he really stepped up that night. He showed everybody he's a, a great horse up on the front end and uh, takes a brave horse to hold him out, as he showed in the Spur of St. Louis trying to hold him out. So, no, And it's his favourite distance, so he's uh, yeah certainly coming on, getting a lot better. How's he settled in? Well, if a spotless polished feed bin's anything to go by, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So excited to bring him here to take on the Kiwis, obviously another Australian as well. I said to Greg about the Cambridge track. How much have you seen of it? And what will you be saying to expat Kiwi Adam Sanderson? Be nice to have him back in town. Yeah, no, he's looking forward to getting back and driving him over here. Uh, I don't usually give driving instructions. He knows how to drive, and I just prepare the horse and... Uh, He'll be, he'll be right on the night, so it'll be up to Adam. But no, the Kiwi horses, they're very good horses and they have got the home ground advantage, but they'll, they'll know he's in there. Really appreciate you bringing your horse here and wish you all the best, Shen. No, it's definitely an experience. Thank you. Shannon Price, uh, all the way from Queensland. Magnificent to have her here with Speak the Truth. And here's a bloke who's come back from Australia, from Victoria. Joshua Dickey gets to steer behind Old Town Road. It's a special horse. Your dad, obviously, John, trains. Uh, you've come up with the same marble, albeit you started from two last year, but um, excited that your home track in so many respects, Cambridge, has got these two great races. Oh, for sure, Greg. Um you know, I spent all my younger years knocking around Cambridge, running up the fence line and in uh, and my little colours and probably terrorising everyone at the stables. But, um, yeah, just to be back and, and driving in a race like this for Dad and, you know, not just Dad, Ben and Karen Calder, um, they've probably supported Dad for 20-plus years, but not just been clients. They've been great friends of Dad and now myself and Sammy, they're just great people and this is a a great opportunity to, um, you know, all enjoy together and, and hopefully get the best out of it. He's a brilliant racehorse, this guy. Zachary Butcher told me about start two or three. He was special. He was right. You have now had the chance to steer him on race night. He was unlucky the other night. He was charging towards the line. That must have pleased you and Dad. Well, it did. And, you know, um, I think after he won at Auckland a couple of starts ago, Dad and I had a little chat about it, that he's probably best just looking after him next couple um, if we got... The rub of the green, that's fine, but um, I think what he showed last couple, he's he's been pretty unlucky, and uh, I, I thought the last 100 metres the other night was fantastic. He was climbing over them after the line. I, I think Dad's, you know, got him back to near enough that, that time before Ashburton, when he when he showed that electric speed, he's, he's, he's a very fast horse, and, you know, he just, like every horse in the race, they all need a bit of luck, but... Um, you know, he's so fast and hopefully we can just get that right trip and, and he can use that speed. What about the barrier draw? I know you've only had a brief moment to have a look at it. What do you make of it? Well, it's good. I, you know, it's um, the, the way I look at these, they're, they're barrier draws and, 
it's, it's easy to analyse it straight away with what's drawn one and two and that sort of thing. And I just find in these sort of races, they've all got gate speed. They're, it'll be electric early, um, sometimes drawn wide. You can get a better run at them early. And um, it, it's just interesting. It's something I'm going to have to sit down and, and probably figure out for, for myself, um, you know, how I see it properly. But um, it, it's exciting to see that and, you know, what, what you may think happened. But, um, yeah, as I say, I'll sit down and have a chat with Dad and we'll come up with a plan and we'll go from there. Driven plenty of winners at Cambridge. Tell me about some of the nuances of the track. So often at this level, off the markers is not a great spot, spot to be. No, it won't be. It'll be tough. Um, you know, there'll be, you know, 237, 236. It's hard when you're, when you're off the pegs. It's, it's going to be crucial. Um, I think if there's plenty of gate speed, it should help the race anyway. Um, if, if it doesn't pan out that way in that first 600, you know, it was a little bit like last year. Copy that was unbelievable, but, you know, that first 600 aided him to run that speed from there. You know, that's the difference in the race. Um, if it's a hard run to the corner, then I think it's anyone's race. And cold shot can, can win. Self-assured shown that he can win from a tough barrier. Um, I, I just don't think it's as simple as what it is on paper with barriers. Um, but end of the day, mate, it's exciting. It's great horses, great trainers, great drivers. It's just good to be a part of it. We wish you all the best to you, your dad, all of the connections um, go well on Friday night. Appreciate it, mate. There you go, boys. Uh, Joshua Dickey, he gets to drive the speedy horse Old Town Road. I don't know if you can glean too much out of the interviews, as per normal. Uh, most of them keep their cards pretty close to their chest, but there's a lot of talk to be done now, fellas. I'm looking forward to hearing Wales' analysis, what he thinks might happen off the gate in both races, uh, and where the markets have gone, because significantly in the race by Grins for a million dollars, the pre-post favourite has come up with that plum barrier draw, Don't Stop Dreaming of two. Of two. Yes, and we'll rele uh, release those uh, markets very shortly, Greg. Josh makes a great point there about the, 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 the debate about what's going to happen leading up, up to the next couple of days, because there is so much intrigue around the barrier draws, how much speed's going to be in the race. I'm looking forward to your analysis, especially on Wednesday, but just quickly your reaction to, to what we've seen there uh, in terms of those two barrier draws. Well, I think what, what's unfolded in the previous two years have been two different types of races, BP. In the first year, Self Assured overcame a bad draw, but there was a lot of pressure early in the race. Spankham went forward, South Coast Arden went forward. There were three leaders inside the first 600 metres and the lead up time was good. Last week copy that roll to the front, there was no pressure mid stages and, and he did it very nicely. It's all going to revolve about what happens early in the race and uh, who gets into the right spot but market pegs in Cambridge in recent years has always been the place to be. OK let's have a look at market for you and uh, the first market that we will reveal uh, will be the race by Grins. Can tell you that Kango is at $18 to see what a top four price might be there for Kango drawn in Barry number one. Don't Stop Dreaming at $1.90. Old Town Road at $10. Merlin $3.50. First of all, your, your thoughts on what you see in front of you there, Craig? Uh, not too sure about Don't Stop Dreaming's price at under $2, BP. It was two fifty dollars prior to the draw. Now, uh, if you're taking a $1.90, you want him in front here. I, I, don't wanna, I don't want to take a $1.90 on Don't Stop Dreaming if he's not in front or in the trail. So I think he, he might be slightly unders, where Merlin's three fifty dollars was three twenty dollars prior to the draw, and he sat parked out to win last start. I think I was looking at that market here. I think self-assured, $16 yeah. for a horse that's won the race, placed last year and in good, very good form. Uh, he's got to be a great top three chance, and speak the Truth out to ten dollars. I think got as short as seven fifty. But obviously the bookmakers have seen the draw and they've reacted. Yeah, self-assured price is an interesting one. A very good run too on Thursday night, and of course the winner of the inaugural running of the race by Grins speed map. Let's talk to, about the speed map for uh, the race by Grins. What do you see happening off the gate? And you, you're thinking out wide and from where Merlin and Speak the Truth are. Well, this is my immediate reaction on, on seeing the draw BP. I think Kango's got very good gate speed. We've seen that in the past. We saw him went over. 1700 metres three starts ago. We know we can go forward. Don't stop Trim. He's got to use the draw. Uh, Mark will allude it to me on Friday that he will use the draw. Old Town Road's kind of in between them. I'm not sure if he wants to burn early. The best version of him is when he shows his speed. And John said to me on numerous occasions, he's lethal with a sit. That's the best version of him. But he's got the draw. He's got to stay handy. Max Shard in four, I don't think he'll get involved early. Merlin from five, I do believe. He's won two derbies, both times from being in front. And he's drawn barrier number five. He'll cross Max Shard early. I expect 
expect him to go forward. The interesting one on that front row draw is speak the truth. Because any other draw than seven, he maps as your leader. Can he get across him from seven? All right, Greg, we'll pass it back to you. Next BP, uh, I've got Dan Rack from The Boys Get Paid. Um, you guys have put a syndicate together. Uh, it's still rolling. What are you up to now in terms of the pool and what are you hoping to get to, Dan? Yeah, we're up to 50,000 now or just a little bit over, maybe getting close to 55,000. Um, typically what we find with the punters clubs as they get closer to the time, they start to swell quite quickly in that last 48 hours. So hopefully we can maybe see it get over 150K. You've already had an investment. Part of that went well, don't stop dreaming. The other part, Muscle Mountain, didn't go so well. So you guys took the $10, what have you outlaid already? Yeah, so we put a $10,000 bet on for uh, the multi Muscle Mountain into Don't Stop Dreaming. Uh, pretty happy with Don't Stop Dreaming's draw. Muscle Mountain didn't quite go our way, but I think if uh, either of them were gonna get a bad draw, I personally probably would have preferred Muscle Mountain to get the worst one out of the two of them. So maybe we might be all right. All right, we've seen what the boys get paid. Uh, have done on a race course before at Ellerslie. This is really the first time you've had numbers at a meeting like this. Uh, I've seen it there with uh, Dexter Dunn a few years ago uh, where you started chanting. We're all looking forward to seeing that. Um, and, of course, there's opportunity for people to get involved in the syndicate right up until Friday? Yeah, yeah. So the syndicate will stay open right up until the first race, so that's at 5.15. Um, we do have, I think we've sold a little over 100 tickets already on course as well. We're hoping to sell that out and get 150, and hopefully we can uh, re recreate some of that magic. At Eddington on show day about a year ago, I think Cyrus won the last race and you blokes collected 200,000. Great for you, not so good for our friends at Entain TAB, but that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, we'd love to have scenes like that, that'd be great. Yeah. All right, we wish you all the very best with the syndicate getting over six figures. Well done on what you've achieved so far. Cool, cheers mate. So Dan Rack, they'll be doing their best to uh, have a real good crack at the bookies, guys. Um, yeah, a little bit of trepidation around the Muscle Mountain barrier draw, but we know his high speed and maybe the pressure comes off young Ben Hope, uh, not needing to go forward in the early stages, whereas BP, well, if he had drawn one to four, he would have had to light him up. Yes, and maybe if uh, Ben Hope can get this one over the line, maybe there's only one Ben Hope uh, <laughs> potentially will be the chorus uh, on a Friday night. But let's talk about the, the TAB Trot and just the market around this race. Two dollars and ten cents for Just Believe. Call me the breeze. Four fifty. I uh, see Phoenix at five dollars and fifty cents, and there's Muscle Mouse in at six fifty. What that tells me is the bookmakers reacted to RC Phoenix draw. I think it was about seven fifty prior to the draw, and we know his gate speed. So they've, they've said, listen, he, he possibly could be early leader into five fifty. Just Believe, I think, got short as a dollar seventy. Two ten, pretty nice price for him. BP. Call me the breeze. Stay pretty steady at four fifty, and then you've got the massive move on Muscle Mount. He got as short as three twenty prior to the draw. Mm. He's doubled the price. If you're a Muscle mountain fan, $6.50 you'll never get that again. No, you won't. You never will. Um, is there anything there you wanted interested in nibbling well, right Oscar, now? Oscar Bonavina. I'd be playing a top three option. I think he's in a perfect draw to get top three here. Top four at least, BP, because if he's $10 to win, he's got to be $3 a place, yeah. and he's probably two twenty to run top four. So if I'm sitting back now and uh, I'm sitting at my computer, he's a horse that follows speed, and he's back in form from a Thursday night win. All right, we've already had a look at the speed map, but it's an interesting one, isn't yeah. it, what happens, because you've got RC Phoenix, who you can, we know he can come off the gate. You've got Call Me The Breeze, who's a horse that's showing that in, in, in limited starts out of Australia. So we really could see some fireworks early off the gate with those four runners drawn the inside, but especially those two, the two and the four. Oh, absolutely. I think they hold the key. I think Queen Queen Elida got a little bit uh, on the nickel last Thursday night. She got across them and pulled quite hard. I think 2200 will suit her better than, than the mile last uh, Thursday night. I think the European tried to call me the breeze. He, he's a funny horse because when he can come across, he can come across really quickly. They'll use that draw barrier number four. He's a $1.6 million earner, BP. I mean, he's only had five starts in Australia, but he's won a great Southern star. He's beaten the best horse in Australasia and he's he's kind of in the draw that he wants to be. I don't think he wanted one, but I think four's a nice draw because sometimes you can work across them. Midnight Dash and Mystic Max, they won't get involved early. They'll go back and they'll look for a little bit of uh, little bit of luck. But gee, one to four, you couldn't have scripted it any better for the first bend. Man, they've got to run into that into that first bend at Cambridge Race with a hell of a speed. Right, I know it's just your reaction right now, but we'll get more analysis over the next couple of days. And of course, you'll be involved in the on the box seat uh, coming up live on Wednesday night at 7:30. Yeah, 
we're looking forward to that, BP. 7.30 to 8.30. It's a live show an hour with uh, Greg hosting Michael and myself. And we'll obviously uh, have a couple of more days to, to take on what we've seen here tonight. But um, I love the draw. I think it's made it so much more intriguing uh, for the trotters. And for the pace as well, if you're back, don't stop dreaming. Or Merlin prior to the draw, I don't think you'd be disappointed. All right. Well, that's us here from Smith & McKenzie. It has been a super night, and I'm sure a lot will stick around as well. And big ups uh, as well to the club and David Branch. They have uh, done this perfectly once again, and let's hope that the weather plays its part for Friday night. Kokiri will be there as well. Race by Grins is going to be super. A million-dollar race, and, of course, the inaugural running of the TAB Trot. Make sure you're there for the first race at Cambridge Raceway on Friday night at 14 minutes past five. This is what we've been waiting for. Two and a quarter laps in the heart of New Zealand here in the Waikato. Green lights, racing. everybody welcome along to party central cambridge raceway the race by grins for 2023 green light is up it's copy that though copy that he adds the race by grins to his already magnificent 